My name is Martin Andrews and I'm a TV presenter and reporter. I've hosted shows on RT and appeared on CTV AM in Canada, CNN, ITV and the BBC. I love to travel and I've traveled to more than 170 countries. With my background of more than 20 years in the media working for various networks, I'm full of curiosity about unknown destinations. 16 years of working at RT or Russia Today gave me a deeper understanding of Russia. My next goal is to explore countries such as China, a country that is still unfamiliar to most Westerners. I have actually been to China twice, visiting Beijing and Shanghai, but China is so, so big. If you want to get a better understanding, you don't just go to China once or twice, but have to visit several times. I did plan to travel to China recently, but due to the pandemic, I had to delay this plan sometime in the future. But fear not, my interest in getting to know China has not diminished. The upcoming 2022 Winter Olympics will open in Beijing on February the 4th. As a reporter and presenter from the Sochi Olympics in Russia and as a sports fan, if it wasn't for the pandemic, I probably would be traveling to Beijing on a plane very soon. Sadly, that's not going to happen now, but it hasn't made me lose any interest at all. I have been looking at two studies regarding the Beijing Winter Olympics. One looking at the reporting from eight mainstream medias and the other was a poll conducted in the United States. I found a connection between the two survey results that I wanted to share with you here and also welcome everyone to take a second look at what we have long held to be right. The eight media included in the research were AP News, Fox News, New York Times, BBC, NBC, CNN, The Wall Street Journal, and The Washington Post. Amongst the eight sources, the research team browsed through a total of 276 reports covering the Beijing Winter Olympics, which included 212 reports on human rights or boycotting the Beijing Winter Olympics, amounting to 77% of the total coverage. Um, well, that's a it's, it's a very big question, the degree to which uh, the media influence behaviors. Um, so they do so a variety of different ways. Uh, the media can frame stories in a certain light. So take, the, take a particular event, frame it a certain way to influence people's interpretation of that event one way or the other. Um, they can prime people to think of certain issues, make them more important uh, in political discourse. There's another saying in the West, and that is, if it bleeds, it leads. In other words, why would you have happy stories about the Olympic Winter Games when all this terrible stuff is going on over here? Is it happening over there? Who knows? It is, maybe it isn't. But as far as the foreign media is concerned, you betcha. A deep dive online poll we conducted on Survey Monkey seems to support this perspective that the world people perceive is only a world described by the media, which is not the real world. The poll targeted middle and high income respondents with an annual income of 70,000 US dollars or more and a bachelor degree or above. The results showed that among the more than 300 people who responded, about 63% who were concerned about the Beijing Winter Olympics were concerned about human rights issues, while the proportion of people who were concerned about issues directly related to the Winter Olympics, such as the sporting events, environmental protection, and the living environment for the athletes, was just below 40%. It was noted that the main issues that the people cared about were directly proportional to the main issues reported by the media. The human rights issues that the respondents cared about the most were precisely those that the media have reported the most. I interviewed Professor Nicholas Evans Sarantakis. He often publishes political and military commentary in mainstream newspapers and magazines. I don't think uh, a boycott is particularly effective. I've never seen it work. There have been a number of boycotts. Uh, the historical lesson to be learned is boycotts don't work. Trying to manipulate the games, I think, is kind of unwise because that's kind of it's a day late and a dollar short. People want to see the athletes. The athletes want to compete. And for the most part, these athletes, 
in the United States or elsewhere are not going to get huge paydays. Some of them do, but for the most part, no one really is lining up to see the guy who won the gold medal in archery shoot the arrow uh, accurate and fast. There's a finite space of time that young people can compete. Basically, 20 to maybe 28. That's it. Is it right to politicize the games? No. Is it going to happen? Yes. Are countries physically going to boycott these games? Yes. I believe they will. I don't think they can help themselves. I think it, there's too much temptation and, and too many other constituencies that they play to in various countries, not just the United States or Canada. Everyone wants to win. Politicians become number one in their eyes because they have the power to pull the games away from their athletes. Um, I mean, I've been on skis my whole life. I think my parents sent me in ski boots when I was probably like 18 months or so. Um, so, you know, I've been skiing forever. Um, as far as like preparation for this moment, like moment we commit to the sport um, and have that Olympic dream, we're working towards that. So every four years, we get one opportunity for um, the Olympic medals to be able to represent our country on that stage. Um, and it would, yeah, be, I mean, devastating, be heartbreaking to not get that opportunity and have to wait another four years for that. So under a misleading media, the general public's concern for the 2022 Winter Olympics seems to be centered on political issues regarding the Winter Olympics itself. Is there really nothing worthy of our attention that is more meaningful to mankind? Well, the feeling was uh, one of excitement. Uh, everybody mentioned that they can't wait to be here in, uh, in Beijing and for the Games to open on the 4th. Everybody understands as well uh, what, what we repeated, that is uh, to, to live by the playbook rules from now until they arrive into the uh, closed loop, which will be very, very safe. Uh, but there is a lot of excitement. Um, obviously, the games for all of us and, and for the athletes in particular is the main objective within the four year cycle. So they are prepared concretely. Each and every situation will be reviewed in great detail. We owe it to the athletes to be as forensic as we can, because for years they've been preparing to come to these games and to be with us on the occasion of the opening ceremony on the 4th of February. Likewise, as a journalist who is very interested in studying the Eastern world, I may pay more attention to increasing my understanding of the upcoming Winter Olympics than most people the first is COVID-19 outbreak prevention. At present, the coronavirus is still spreading around the world. After the Delta strain, the Omicron strain is more transmissible. How things develop in the future is still uncertain. In these circumstances, the challenge of holding a global sports meeting is very real, rigorous. And at the Tokyo Olympic Games held last summer, there were outbreaks and hundreds of people were infected. What measures will Beijing take to prevent and control such outbreaks? I've learned from my friends in China that they are announcing the implementation of a strict closed loop system for all people who come to China to participate in the Beijing Winter Olympics to ensure that there is no contact with the public outside of that loop. It's said that Beijing Capital Airport has established its own closed loop system as well. The aim is to provide faster and more convenient customs clearance and entry procedures. Uh, the arrival into Beijing and the closed loop was a seamless operation. Very, very uh, good uh, training for uh, all the staffs. The only thing we couldn't see were the smiles behind the mask, but for the rest, really, it was impeccable. It took us between 35 to 40 minutes from the moment we came uh, down from the plane uh, into the bus uh, straight into the hotels. But 
For example, the gym will be separate. Uh, the dining uh, will be separate as well. Transportation will be separate too, in order to avoid that others become close contacts. So the rules are, are really designed to protect everyone, to make sure that the roles can be fulfilled That's really comforting knowing how strict it's not political. Um, you know, we've worked our whole lives for this moment. And it, yeah, I mean, it has, it has nothing to do with politics. It's just, you know, this is, this is our career. This is our, our livelihood. And um, I think we deserve the opportunity to go and represent our country um, on the Olympic stage. Regarding the living environment created for athletes and coaches, the Beijing Winter Olympics also offers many innovations. For example, the Olympic Village is built in accordance with the Well Gold Certification Standard for Healthy Buildings, using new vacuum insulation board materials to ensure that the facilities are warm in the winter and cool in the summer. An independent fresh air system is established in each room. Fresh air volume is increased by 30% compared with the general national standard. A multi-stage water purification system is used to provide the cleanest direct drinking water. And the beds in the rooms are made of memory foam. The shape can be automatically adjusted to suit individual comfort. In addition, all Paralympic Games rooms are equipped with complete barrier-free facilities. China's 5G technology is world-leading and Beijing Winter Olympics Village is fully 5G ready. I've read some reports that the Beijing Winter Olympics will be a completely green-led event. The main stadium of the Beijing Winter Olympics is in the city of Zhangjiakou, 200 kilometers north of Beijing, home to the famous Zhangbai grasslands. Reports are that the electricity used for the Beijing Winter Olympics is generated by the wind power base here. It's very encouraging that all the buses used to transport athletes use hydrogen energy vehicles to achieve zero emissions, a powerful example of green innovation at scale. I heard the Beijing Winter Olympics organizing committees claim to be thrifty in its hosting of the Games. Most venues make full use of existing venues, with new venues being the exception. With regard to environmental uh, protection and transformation, for instance, the biggest former steel factory in Beijing, Shugang, will be transformed into an urban sports park, a full transformation from such a steel factory uh, to uh, a green and sustainable area for the people with offices on the one hand and uh, with leisure opportunities in the urban sports park uh, on the other hand. When I travelled to Beijing in 2012, I saw that Beijing was building a high-speed railway to Zhangjiakou, the main Winter Games venue. It's the main means of transportation for staff to the stadium. China's high-speed rail is a global miracle. In just 20 years, China has built nearly 40,000 kilometers of high-speed rail, ranking first in the world. No, first of all, uh, Beijing will write uh, history because as, uh, it will be the first city ever to host uh, both editions of uh, uh, the Games, uh, the winter and the uh, summer. Uh, this is already an achievement in itself, uh, but uh, there is also, again, the legacy uh, there uh, Beijing uh, does uh, this in a way greatly benefiting uh, from uh, the legacy of uh, the summer uh, uh, games by turning uh, a number of these uh, venues into uh, venues uh, for the, the, the winter games and I think uh, this uh, will uh, make uh, you know some uh, people uh, looking at it uh, with uh, with really great eyes uh, when they see then the water cube uh, being uh, turned uh, into uh, the curling uh, venue uh, for instance and uh, when they see other venues uh, being turned into uh, winter uh, venues uh, this is a, a great example I mean,
I've learned that more than 100 countries will send nearly 3,000 athletes to participate in the Beijing Winter Olympics. This is not only a matter for China, but also for the world at large. As one of the most important large-scale international sports events held every four years, there are many things worthy of attention. So let's forget about politics and let's just concentrate on sport. Only sport. If the media can report more about the Winter Olympics and the sporting events that will be played out, cover more experiences that can be used for reference and encourage greater participation, then it will bring us more benefit. Boycotting a sports festival, a two week long winter sports festival is not going to do a whole lot to actually affect meaningful change. And it probably is just going to end up angering people. And the National Olympic Committees that send their teams, they might call themselves the U.S. Olympic team or the British Olympic team or the Canadian Olympic team, but they're really just a private sports club team. And I don't think it's realistic to expect them to carry the weight uh, and the policies and the foreign policies of their, their home nation states. And the athletes... Some get to go to two and three, but the majority of athletes only get to go to one Olympics. When this video report was released on the internet, it was less than a month before the opening of the 2022 Beijing Winter Olympics. If we are sports fans, let us not miss this opportunity to learn about it and appreciate it. After all, we'll have to wait another four years until the next one.